What's up YouTube, Webbers5 here coming out today with my top 5 decks owned by Dockquartition84 that I like to duel against. So before we get into this video I just want to say a shout out to Matthew Welch for requesting this from me. He technically posted this as a question on one of my videos and I thought, you know I've wanted to do a top something video for a while as opposed to just answering this question, I thought I'd just make a video out of it so then all of you get to find out. So thank you Matthew, that's really appreciative. So without further ado, I'll go into my top five. So for the number five slot, I've chosen Summon Skull. So I've chosen Summon Skull on the reason that it's a classic vanilla that I absolutely love from back in the day. I think a lot of us did as well. He was like the best beat, he was like the best one tribute beat stick back in one back in the old formats. Still is a still is a decent one tribute beat stick now, but now we're in such a time of Yu-Gi-Oh where it's so different. Another reason I like his variant of the Summon Skull is it's got nice manipulation of the summoning methods. An interesting ritual monster as well, which is quite cool. Another reason I like it is because it uses the spell it uses the spell card I like the most with my absolute favourite artwork, which is Celestial Observatory. And if you guys are wondering, hey, Webbers, come on. Do you really like the card that much? Yes. Yes I do. It was just one of those underrated secret rares that people didn't want. I really liked the artwork, so I got into the point of hoarding them off people because they didn't want them. And Summon Skull's a decent deck that can actually take advantage of it, so that's another reason I really like the deck. Okay, so moving up to the number four slots, I've chosen Dark Quartician's Random All Stars. So I've chosen. I really like this one to play against because it's an interesting concept of a deck of just one off of every single card. So it gives the deck a really good diversity factor in terms that he's always pretty much going to have a different strategy because there's no chance he's going to have the same cards two games in a row. There's minimum chance he's going to hit the same cards two games in a row. So it also adds that nice little unknown factor. I always have to kind of rethink my strategy around it and be like, okay. What could he be using this time? What's his hand going to be a bit like? It's also a big fear factor in terms of back row, because I know Dark Quartician, he plays lots of back row in a few, fair few of his decks. So that's one of those decks where I'm just going to be like, oh god, it's only one of each card. What is that back row? He could have potentially any kind of back row disruption that could hit me. Do I want to risk this? So yeah, it's just a really nice deck that helps me think on my feet and also adjust to my strategy. It's also very interesting to see like if he opens really well with the deck and just makes an insane board, or if he just bricks like Monarchs did several years ago. I say several years ago, they're still bricking now. So yeah, that's why I chose Random All Stars for my number four star. It was also really good because it inspired me to create my I think you guys have seen this on my channel, my All-Star Pendulum build. So, give me, an, give me a nice way to try that out as myself. And because of how I built my All-Star Pendulums, it was a nice throwback to how I used to play the deck as well. Unfortunately, because of the rules of the link, it's not nearly as good as it was back in the day. <sighs> Sad times. Anyway, so moving on then to the number three slot. My number three slot I've chosen as his Cybus deck. So I've chosen Cybus on reason that, again, a bit like his random all-stars got a nice bit of diversity to it, but in this case, it's got a nice diversity in terms of summoning method because Cybus can use pretty much all the summoning methods except Pendulum, but that's kind of how most decks work now. That more manipulates summoning methods. I also find it very I also find it a bit challenging if he makes a board involving a combination of things like Transcode and Xcode Talker and or Cybus Quantum Dragon, because that's just going to lock me, because that's going to lock me out of one of my zones, puts me puts up a set of monsters that can't easily be killed, and then if and generically if Quantum's on board and I don't have a way to destroy it, because if he's playing something like Cybus Wicked, that would prevent it from being destroyed. I'm in a very difficult position because then I just need two monsters that can have enough attack points to smack over it. Because naturally, the first, because Quantum's effect states if you control a link monster, your opponent can't attack anything else except this card. 
and Cyber's Quantum's main effect, as everyone knows, once per turn if it battles a monster, you can bounce it back to your opponent's hand and then it's allowed to attack again. But since that works on either turn, it's just a good way to disrupt an opponent's attack. So it's a very difficult thing to get around and it makes it quite challenging, which is one of the reasons I enjoy playing the deck. I've also followed the Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns anime and it's nice to just see the deck. Furthermore, Cyber's Clock Dragon is a really badass fusion monster, probably one of my top fusion monsters, and it's nice to see him get played every now and then. Okay, so then moving up to the number two slot, I've chosen his rocket deck. So I really like so I like his rocket deck, because again from the diversity into diversity in terms of like how we can use it for the control factors with a borrow on the field by using means of rocket tracer and quick lords to summon different rockets that can disrupt me in different ways. So I have to be in a position like, okay, he's got rocket tracer and he's got a borrow. I have to think my move through carefully because if I threaten the, tr I have to try and threaten the tracer before doing anything to force him into summoning a rocket that may or may not necessarily be good for the situation. But if I can't always control that factor, if it's like mid to late game, then it's really difficult to play around. Another reason I really liked the deck was because I remember a tournament I had, I think it was around March or so, last year, yeah, around March or so, maybe a bit before then. So Dark Petition was playing, I ended up placing Dark Petition round two against his Rockets playing my Endibion. And I remember game two, he put me in a very difficult situation that really did force me to think outside the box. So he's so I had set up my board, it was kind of average. I was Medusa I had Medusa, uh, Garuda, which I just summoned by bouncing back his Delindrous Dragon, uh, Servant of Endymion, a uh, reflection of Endymion, sorry. And my master, whose negate had already been baited through with one copy of Boot Sector launch. So he dropped the second copy of Boot Sector, used the effect to raise three of his rockets to make a link four, and I'm like, Borrowload. Oh dear. I don't have an easy way to deal with Borrowload. Not with this field. So, so that really made me think through, because I'm like, Okay, if I do not, tr I've got to find some way to get around this Borrowload, because otherwise he's just going to rob my Mighty Master and kill off a few, kill off a few extra of my monsters, and then I'm just going to be stuck. And then naturally he's got a spell negate that he can use, because even though my Master says you have to bounce a card with spell counters, it can bounce itself, so it's still something he could manipulate against me. And yes, it would go back to my hand, but he's still stopping one of my cards. So I'm like. So in my brain, I'm thinking, I cannot let him do this. And so I had to think, what can I do to stop him from doing this? I'm like, Medusa can't hit the bo Medusa can't hit the Borolo because it can't be targeted. And Mighty Master can't be targeted by my opponent's card effects. I'm like, wait, can't be targeted by my opponent's card effects. And I read through Medusa, it just says, Medusa says, target a monster on the field and harvest attack points. So I'm like, that's it. That's how I saved myself. So he's like, battle phase and like start a battle phase effect a medusa remove two spell counters target mighty master cut his attack points in half so i dropped my master down to 1400 attack points meaning it couldn't attack over anything on my field meaning it would be pointless for him to take it with the borrow load he chose to take my reflection instead and use that to wipe out the endymion but because it was destroyed by battle i then got to roads for a spell card which set me up to win on the next turn but I would not have been able to have been in that position if he hadn't forced me to really think outside the box in that match. So Richie, I do really appreciate you doing that for me. Borrowload is a very difficult card to get around and you really did force me to think to save myself in that game, so thank you very much. Okay, before I move into the number one slot, guys, I just want to do a few honorary mentions. So honorary mentions, I've got four decks that he plays would be Buster Blader and his Supreme Kings. Now, they're honorary mentions because I like the concepts of the decks. Buster Blader is my absolute favorite mo effect monster from the entire series. I did want to try building the deck when they got the support in Breakers of Shadow. I tested it, it was average. They've had a bit more support recently, but I haven't really looked too much into it. Dark Magician did ask if I thought about considering making it again. I still need to actually look into the deck to see what it does now, so... But it's still one of those... 
up here considering, but I'm not actively doing anything about it right now. And then also Supreme King as an honorary mention because it's another deck concept which I really like. I remember Zark from the anime, that was such a fun deck that he played. It's also a pendulum build, so it's interesting to see Dark Petition having a pendulum deck because he doesn't make very many of those. I've only put these as honorary mentions because technically I haven't actually played against either of them, but hopefully once we get back into playing the game, which from what I've told, seen, my locals should be reopening at the end of this month, and there was also the announcement by Konami recently that they're just going to be restarting organized play soon, so hopefully maybe we can be back into gaming soon, so maybe I can give those a try. But until I've actually played them, naturally just honorary mentions, so I can't actually judge them. And so moving into my number. And so guys, to the number one slot. I wasn't actually able to pick a single deck for this, so I've actually put the number one slot as his three signature decks of Dark Magician, Elemental Hero, and Rainbow Neos. So I like all I like playing against all three of these decks because naturally they're just the three decks I associate most with the Dark Magician. They're just his signature decks. They're all really good in their own ways. They've all challenged me in different ways. They've given me so many interesting matchups. It's just been an honor to play against them. It's really great. So, naturally, I really like Dark Magician because it's a signature deck. Once they got their new support in the Dark Illusion, that really pumped the deck to the next level. I'm like, wow, this deck's giving me so much more trouble than it did in the past. Frankly, I can't even remember what Dark Magician did back before then. Yep, nothing, nothing's coming to me. And ever since then, they just keep getting more and more support because naturally, it's an old archetype. It's a favorite archetype, so they just keep giving it support and it just keep getting, keeps getting better and better. And that makes it more and more interesting to play every time that I face him. It's also really nice to see that he takes in some of my suggestions with the builds. Like, I think I saw in his last deck profile, I remember I recommended him try maybe Imduk of the World Chalice God Dra Dragon in his extra deck to have a dragon option into making Dragon Knight, and he took that into consideration because I really think that could help, and I do appreciate him taking in my advice. Heroes, naturally, I like, naturally, that was an inspiration for me to build my hero variant, and it's very fun to do a hero mirror match every now and then. Heroes also manipulate various fusion monsters depending on their situation and what attributes they've got available, so it's always a nice bit of unexpected, never knowing what he's going to use. He also plays some of the original ones as well as the Omni Heroes, so it's quite interesting to think, ooh, so he's got these materials, I've got this kind of board, what's he going to make? Gives me that nice bit of thinking ahead. And then also Rainbow Neos. Rainbow Neos is just a stupidly strong monster. Admittedly, I probably have to say between the three of them, Rainbow Neos is the one I like the least. Just because on reason that Rainbow Neos' effect basically just says no to every one of the strategies I come up with with a lot of my decks. So like, if I play a grave specific strategy against him, he's like, that's a nice grave, put it back in the deck. But I play pendulums, I'm like, okay, get rid of your scales. Or actually, keep your scales, get rid of your monsters. It's just such an annoying card for me to have to deal with and I don't enjoy- And frankly, I do not enjoy playing against it. But, it's also one of those- But it's just a nostalgic deck that is him, so I really enjoy. And fr And frankly, when I first got into my locals several years ago, I remember the first deck when I met Dark Magician that he was playing was Rainbow Neo. So even though he is the Dark Magician and Dark Magician's his signature deck, I've always just kind of associated Richie with Rainbow Neo as one of his big decks. So even though sometimes I don't like playing against it, it's still just one of those decks that will always have a special place in here for me. And Frank, and frankly, I think we're kind of even in terms of my likes, dislikes in terms of the Rainbow Neos, because I can recall one matchup I had against him where I pulled a really cheeky maneuver against him. It was back during the Guard Dragon format, because I knew I was against Rainbow Neos. I threw something into I had something in my extra deck as a way to snipe out a lot of the meta at the time, and it proved very effective in my method of dealing with Rainbow Neos and how to defeat it. It was in terms of using Guard Dragon Arga Pain to summon. Dragoonity Knight Trident, who has the effect to send up to three cards on your field to the grave to scope your opponent's extra deck and send an equal number of cards to the grave. So I summoned it, sacked three cards to send all three copies of his Rainbow Neos to the grave so he couldn't use it against me. 
it was it was a signature it was a really fun play won me the game unfortunately he has absolutely never forgiven me for doing so but then again I've had so but I suppose we're kind of even from the number of times he's done rainbow neos that absolutely screwed up so many of my strategies I can remember a matchup I had between rainbow neos and my cyber darks I got my cyber dark dragon on the board massive power up and he's just like uh so Make Rainbow Neos, effect, put your grave back in the deck. Oh no wait, it wasn't in that order, he was like, some Rainbow Neos, some Rainbow Neos, um, MST, MST your equip card, effect of Rainbow Neos, mill the top card, put your grave back in the deck, cut my monster out of all of his attack points and then he just smacked me for game. So, yeah, we're kind of even on that front. We're even, right, Rochi? We're still cool. Okay. So yeah, anyway, so that's my top five picks of Dark, of Dark Rotation's decks. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what you thought. And if anyone's got any other like top videos that they would like to see, let me know in the comments below. I've also updated a couple of my decks if anyone would like to see some profiles. I know I still need to do my Invoked Plunder Patrol, which I pretty much got in the position I wanted to. I just haven't really had the time. It's just I haven't really profile there because I haven't really tested I haven't really tested it too much but I've tested it enough to be like okay I'm happy with this for the moment but it's like one of the I guess I've just kind of been in the position like without physical Yu-Gi-Oh I haven't really felt the need to profile my decks but if you guys still wanted to see any naturally let me know I've done an update to Endymion a few weeks ago there's still a couple of bits I'm unsure about but I'm still happy to profile if anyone wants to see it and actually just comment below anything else you guys would like to see me do Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Webers5, and if you're already subscribed, feel free to hit that notification bell so that you never miss an upload.